Greetings, everyone. I, I do want to say that I love the intimacy of our gathering. <laughs> uh, you laugh, but you know, interestingly enough, one of the things I've learned over the years of speaking here and there is that a big crowd is not a crowd that joins you in spirit and in heart. And in honoring Sammy's life and service to us as a community, Sammy was one of those people that showed up with her heart. Everywhere, all the time. Um, sometimes, you never knew what she was doing, but you knew she was doing something helpful. And so in a lot of ways, I'd like to challenge us to model our lives of service to our communities after Sammy. Not for the thanks and for the accolades, but because she had a heart to serve. And I'm grateful for her, and I miss her, and I hold Vicki and their entire family in my heart and in my prayer today. I want to tell you why I'm here. I am here because I am a transsexual man. I was born a little girl a long, 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 long time ago. And I was much like my little girl, um, dressed in pink and all that jazz. And early on, I had a feeling that something wasn't quite right. And as that feeling progressed, I did what I knew how to do, which was I became a dyke, because that was the closest thing I could find that was fitting me. And through a program of recovery and discernment and self-knowledge, I realized that I could no longer hide out in women's spaces because as a good womanist, I couldn't take up space because I was too afraid to transition. And so I began my transition and I became the man that is standing here now. All of that is delightful and wonderful and what is most present in my mind today is that when I was a little kid, I had this dream that was an impossibility. I dreamt of being a father and a husband and a man in the community that could be counted on. None of those things were possible for that little girl in 1964 and 1965. It was akin to saying, I'm going to learn how to levitate and just stay there. And in my community, the African-American community, the notion of changing gender is much like changing race. It's an impossibility, it can't be done. Not it shouldn't be done, but it can't be done. And so when I transitioned for my mother, it was much like saying, no, oh, mom, I've always felt white, I'm going to become white. She couldn't quite wrap her head around it, understandably. What I have come to learn is that regardless of what your spiritual or religious upbringing and underpinning and belief system is, we know who we are in our spirits before our bodies catch up. And were it not for that spiritual knowledge, most of us would have given up a long time ago. While we lost Sammy to brain cancer in Philadelphia, where I'm currently working, in the last month, we have lost at least two that we know about to violence. One, Kyra, who was an amazing activist in Philadelphia, who was brutally murdered. And another woman who had her home invaded, her mother was murdered, and she was shot, and she is still in critical care. Why is that true? That is true because hatred and fear drive so much of our society. The people that do not understand us, cannot understand us, will not understand us, are so trapped by the misogynist notion that might equals right, and in order for things to be rectified, they must strike out in hatred and violence. And I want to tell you as a man of God, a man who has chosen Christianity as my path, there is no God in that. There is no God in that. I don't care what Levitican law you dredge up, there is no God in that violence. The path of the righteous is paved with love and service. Love and service. Love and service. And at that point, at this point, I want to thank Tristan and all who aided Tristan in making this a reality when it was a lost cause. 
when no one wanted to stand up and someone decided to. So I'm working in Philadelphia. I'm working at the Morris Home, named after Niza Morris, who was a uh, slain leader in the Philadelphia trans community. It is the first and only residential recovery program specifically for trans and gender variant people on the planet. The first and only, ever. And right now we have eight women in there who are attempting to recreate a life that has been filled with sorrow, disappointment, danger, criminality, addiction, and suicide on the installment plan. Each and every one of them has been there and has stayed there and has worked diligently to become the woman that they've always wanted to be. And I am so honored to play a part in their becoming. Nationally, in the last month, for the first time ever, 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 the Black Congressional Caucus hosted a panel of black trans women to speak on the Hill. First time ever. Woo! Yeah! While many of us choose to blend, and, and I have nothing against people's individual right of disclosure, some of us who stand in the gap between the seen and the unseen are coming out prouder and stronger every year. More of us are entering seminary. More of us are entering elections. More of us are coming out in our places of business. More of us are coming out in our families. And we are still here standing strong, although we lose far too many to violence every year. Every year we also gain new people to speak up for us, to stand with us as allies and as family. And I want to take this moment to thank all of the partners, the children, and the parents that do not disavow us when we transition. We could not be here without you. I'm gonna be preaching tomorrow at South Congregational Church in Springfield. Come on by if you want to. And you know, one of the interesting things about being the person that I am is that everything that I am was not meant to be. I'm a black man who's not in custody and not on drugs. I'm a black man that was born with a vagina. I am a black man that was supposed to be cracked up and in a gutter somewhere who is nearing 29 years of sobriety. Everything I am and everything I have become is because of grace. We are here because of grace, the universe of grace. Part of why we are here standing here is because someone came before us, many someones came before us, they blazed a trail and many of them died in the act of blazing this trail. And so my job and my challenge to you is to not stand in your little private corner celebrating your transition, but to step out on faith and grace and blaze a trail for those coming after you. There is a little trans person being born tonight that needs your leadership today. Without your leadership today, they will surely die by their own hand or be killed. Because for many of us, those are the only options we have. I'm going to give you one final analogy and then I'm going to shut up. You don't have to. Oh, I'm tired of hearing myself sometimes. <laughs> um, in the black community, we spend hundreds of years in hiding and in servitude, hiding our languages, hiding our spirituality, hiding our true names, hiding our relationships, hiding our strength, hiding our wisdom, hiding our ability to read, and then several things happened. Through an act of political will that had less to do with our lives and more to do with capitalism, President Lincoln emancipated us. And yet some of us, though emancipated, could never be free until we freed ourselves, until we freed our minds. Many, 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 many years later, even after emancipation, Many activists, mostly in the Christian church, many Muslim and, and children of Islam activists, and some who were non-religious altogether, put up fights everywhere, all over the place, for our freedom. And yet, and yet, today, we still have racism alive and well. Why do I say that to you? Because our movement is not an instant oatmeal movement. We have to learn some patience. 
this movement is really very young. And while we want everything right now, <clears throat> everything worth having is worth work working for. And the strength that we get from the work, the muscles that we build through the trials and tribulations are the things that make us stronger. So I ask you to not give up. To use the African American Civil Rights Movement as a model and recognize that Jim Crow for trans people is still alive, but Jim Crow will die. Jim Crow has a very short life expectancy. There are still people fighting our president because they don't think that he deserves to be president. After all, in some places, he's still not yet a man. I identify with that story because in some places I am still not yet a man. I stand with my president and I stand with all men and I challenge all of us as men to flip the script on the abuse that women suffer and to call out those among us that are rapists, that are murderers, that commit assault and to not let them hide in our male enclaves. It is up to us to stop rape and violence against women. It is not up to women to stop that tragic pandemic thing that is worldwide. So as a man that is able to blend easily, I am going into barber shops and pulpits and going where guys hang out and talk real talk and saying to them, if you are hiding a rapist, then you are not a man. And you are surely not a man of God. In this moment, while we talk about freedom for trans people, we cannot talk about freedom for trans people without talking about sexism, misogyny, racism, classism, nationalism, ableism. We all have that in our community. And part of why it's hard for us to build a trans community is because we will not work on our isms. Let's go first. Let's not recreate the mistakes of the lesbian and gay movement and pretend like we don't have differences that are valuable and that we don't have bigotry that must be overcome for us to come together. They've shown us for 30 years how to do it wrong. Let us show them how to do it right. I ask you if you would just join me in a moment of prayer, because it's what I do. If you are not a praying person, join me in a spirit of light and of openness. Please. Universal spirit of many names and many experiences, we ask you here and now to hold our people. To hold the people that are not able to be here today, to hold the people that are not willing to be here today, to hold our enemies in your bosom. Teach us to love ourselves, to put down the things that keep us from being as self-loving as we can be. Heal our families, heal our churches, heal our neighborhoods. Help us to grow into the people you have designed us to be. Remind us that throughout history, those of us at the intersection of gender have always been the healers of community. They have stolen that history from us. Give us the will to reclaim it. Step in the gaps where harm would come our way. We ask you to hold our sister Vicki in your mercy and in your healing in this moment and wrap up Sammy and pull her to your bosom where she belongs. God, if you are among us, be within us, be beside us, be in front of us, fight our battles. And in this moment, we ask just for one day, just for this day, let no harm come to those of us that are walking in treacherous waters out of survival needs. We thank you for the gift of your grace and your mercy. And we ask you to reinforce us, refill us, refresh us, give us every resource that we need to fight this battle. We give you all praise and all thanks. In the name of all that is holy and all that is love, amen. I have the opportunity to introduce someone very special. And I have been given the permission to say whatever I want. You know, in every community, there are those folks that stand out, not because they're extraordinarily tall and beautiful, <laughs> but because their light and their energy is so overwhelming that it cannot be denied. Lorelei is one of those people. Not only are her accomplishments too many for me to name, but as importantly, more importantly, when people are feeling alone in our community, which is common, 
And when people are feeling like no one can stand with them, with might and with strength, and with passion and with humor, Lorelai is often the one who is standing there beside them saying, honey, just come with me, I'll get you up there. Honey, you can sit with me, it'll be okay. Nope, that looks just fine, let's walk. Come on, let's go, sweetie, it'll be all right. Without someone like Lorelai, many in our community would have given up. And so while she is talented in many ways, the thing that I want to recognize in her is what a lifesaver you are. Yes. You may never know how many lives have been saved by just your smile, your strength, and your presence. And so on behalf of our entire community, I thank you and I give you Lorelai.